pray. Just like Rahab, we have all sinned and fall short of your glory. But because of what Jesus did for us, we have been made children of God. We thank you that you are not interested in who we were or where we come from, but love us as the person we are becoming. Jericho's walls were brought down because of real faith. It doesn't matter how high the walls are that we face or how big the mountains are that we climb. You will walk beside us until the day of glory comes. Amen. Side to side, please, Kathy. It's been a real summer of sports so far, hasn't it? If you like that kind of thing. <laughs> Women's football, I'm not quite sure what it is now. Is it athletics? Can't remember. What's going on now? That's the one. I think there's definitely two different kinds of people when it comes to playing sport or games. The ones who say, it's all about the winning. And the others who say, no, 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 it's all about the taking part. And then obviously there's the massive family rows that go between the two factions. But it really is about intending to win, isn't it? Are we the same when it comes to playing out our daily lives? Are we full of enthusiasm, pumped up, passionate? Do we go for it, this life game? Do we want to win at the game of life? Or are we a bit, mm, a bit apathetic about it all? Confronted with a problem, do we go, whoa? Or do we just crash right through? Now Rahab was a real game changer. And she definitely set out to win. She absolutely grabbed the bull by the horns and went for it. Her story has really affected how I think. Not her trade, of course, but how she lived her life. How amazingly powerfully she lived her life. Her sin as a prostitute was blatantly obvious to all. Everyone would have known how she earned her money and everyone would have judged her for it. She was given a golden opportunity and she had to take it. That's not easy. She lived during the time when the Israelites were about to recapture Canaan. They'd been promised by God that their land would be returned to them. And they'd already seen met the miracles, including the party at the Red Sea, which we all know very well. Next slide, Jericho, please. There's one mine. <laughs> they fought hard and were finally camped outside the city walls of Jericho. This amazing fortified city had sheer vertical walls, um, which would have been very, very hard for any invading force to breach. In fact, Jericho had two walls, one set of walls inside the other, and so was doubly fortified. Now these walls were really thick too, probably about 12 feet thick for each wall, and they were wide enough for people to build their homes within them. Rahab lived in one of these and uh, she was in one of the outer rings of walls and her home would have been where the poorer people lived. People just like her really, the, the innkeepers, the money lenders, the prostitutes, shopkeepers. So if something was going to happen to a city, then it would be these people who would be affected first. Now Rahab was a strong and clever woman. She had a big family, by all accounts, and she was head of that household. And her reputation was well established, shall we say, as a lady of the night. Now, Joshua had sent in some spies to just check things out before he launched that invasion of the city, and they met Rahab. It wasn't a coincidental, uh, let's just bump into Rahab, it was part of God's plan. The king of Jericho heard of the spies and he sent out his soldiers to find them sharpish. Rahab hides them. 
she lies to the soldiers and eventually helps them to escape with the promise that they would not harm her family when that invasion eventually happened. And this is what she said. I am paraphrasing. I know your God has given you this land. We heard how God created a tri-path for you through the Red Sea. Your God is supreme. God of the heavens above and the earth below. What amazing faith. Yes, the soldiers, but you must um, not tell anyone that we were here. She lived a scorned and judged life. In fact, she was triply marginalised. She was a Canaanite. She was a prostitute and a woman. The dice was actually really badly rolled against her. Yet here she is listed in the Bible amongst all the great names and her story makes a huge impact on history. Now just imagine for a moment that the thing that you, I, might have done wrong was out there for all to see. That's what she was living like day in, day out. Maybe it wasn't just her trade that made people scorn her, but the heaps of judgment made by everyone around her constantly. Everybody knew. She was shamed on a daily basis, yet she chose to make a change. She had complete faith. She had the boldness to believe a bunch of stories that she had heard about the God of the Israelites, a tribe her tribe was at war with. Yarek was the God her tribe worshipped, the God of the moon. She had any experience of these um, experiences of the Israelites and she didn't witness them herself either, but she had heard them and she said, yeah, I believe that. I trust that. That's awesome. That is some faith. Well, I went to Sunday school when I was little for a little while, and I grew up learning about lots of the stories of the Bible, the adventures, the miracles, the daring do's. So I had a leg to stand on when I began my Christian journey a little bit later on, but Rahab didn't have that. But God knew Rahab. He saw her ability, her faith, and her promise, even though her neighbours, her city, and probably Rahab herself didn't see any of that. What strength she had. In Joshua 2 verse 11, she says this, For the Lord your God is the supreme God of the heavens above and the earth below. She'd never been taught this, but she'd heard the stories. In chapter 2, verse 9, she says this, I know the Lord has given you this land. I know. She knows, and she believes God's plans. She had no evidence, no proof, but she believed. She knew him. She saw him. And she studied him. Lots of you will know this powerful verse, 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 7. For we live by believing and not by seeing. She didn't need to witness the miracles that the Israelites saw. Hearing was enough to set her wheels in motion. I wonder, you know, what would it be like if we could see into the future. If we would follow the same path that we are currently walking. If we saw something we didn't like the look of, would we go, no, thank you, don't like the look of that, so I'm not going to go there. The thing is, we go 
goes through things that make us, that mould us into being the person God wants us to be. Rahab knew without doubt that her role of life was to be a servant of God. She had a part to play, although she didn't know it of course, in a much bigger story. So the spies were led to Rahab. Well, this was no coincidence. This was not a fluke encounter. They were meant to meet this woman. Their paths were meant to cross. I wonder how many of us have felt that actually we are not good enough. We are not good enough. That really we don't have any special gifts, talents, or abilities. We're reliably told in the Bible that we all have different gifts. But that can be hard to believe when you can't see them in yourself. Or I wonder how many of us feel now, or have ever actually felt for that matter, that we don't really belong. Maybe we feel that despite appearances, we don't really fit in. I think everyone can recognise those feelings, but trouble is we're judging ourselves against other people all the time. And that's a big mistake. Many of us will recognise that feeling of having um, low or no self-esteem. In our youth, this might have looked like being that um, classic wallflower in the nightclub or disco. Or later on, perhaps as a young or new parent, we think everyone else knows exactly how to do this parenting thing compared to us. Or in that workplace, that feeling now referred to as imposter syndrome. I know that one myself. Every stage of life has its own troubles and we're so easily deceived into thinking that we are without talent compared to everyone else. We think we are unable. We are able in God. Through Jesus Christ we are given everything we need to serve him and glorify his name. We haven't been made to be no one, to do nothing, because God has lavished his care and attention on us to bring glory to him. We have to take the un out. We are able. So if Rahab can, we can. Maybe we spend so long looking at other people's life stories that we forget to live our own. Evaluating our, their stories, judging perhaps their stories, I'm guilty of that, instead of taking our own journey. He asks us to take it. It is there, waiting for us to pick it up and run with it. Rahab did. Long before those spies found her, she'd begun to trust and love and to grow in faith in a God she knew little about. She could have walked away because of her past, her sin and her guilt. But she felt held fast to her belief and she made her story happen. Has anyone ever holidayed in North Norfolk to change the subject or Lyme Regis? Anybody been there? Yeah? Well, we used to take our children there when they were little and uh, it was obviously to do the, the fossil hunting. And they often found little treasures. I don't know if, you, if your kids have to do them running up. Oh, look at them found, look at them found. And each story is a treasure of itself. And remembering that reminds me, makes me think about Rahab. Rahab did something apparently quite small, but it had a huge impact on history. A bit like a fossil, really. Thousands and thousands of years later, the evidence is still there that it happened. How cool is that? 
Don't let your past define you. Rahab could have done that, but she chose to step out in faith, despite her very colourful backstory and the negative opinions of others. Best part of her story? Well, she married into the Israelite dynasty, which would have been highly unusual at the time, and she became part of the lineage of Jesus Christ. God chose Rahab to be an integral part of the story. She wasn't a likely candidate to be a heroine of faith, but God overruled her story. In James 2.5 we read, Hasn't God chosen the poor in this world to be rich in faith? Aren't they the ones who will inherit the earth? God does not look at who we are, but who we are becoming. He does not look at who we are, but who we are becoming. We hang on to our past because it's what we know the best. But God breaks the chains. He lifts up our heads so that we can look forward rather than backwards over our own shoulders. Going back to sport for a moment, over the summer there's been a lot of really top-notch um, sport going on. And I am certain that every single person who takes part will have experienced a lot of failures themselves. And well, of course they have, because it takes dedication and extensive practice to get where they are. Along the way they will have made mistakes and had many failures. Any sportsman could be forgiven for throwing in the towel, for giving up when they make mistake after mistake, but no, they aim to win. In Hebrews 11, verses 30 and 31, it says this, It was by faith that the people of Israel marched around Jericho for seven days, and the walls came crashing down. It was by faith that Rahab the prostitute was not destroyed with the people in her city who refused to obey God, for she was given them, she had given a friendly welcome to the spies. So think of Rahab. She took a small step for a big win. It's time for us to step forward. God has got this, and with him, we cannot fail. Just before I close, in case any of you are still in any doubt of your own ability or capacity, I'm going to read you this. I can't say I wrote it, but I wish I had. If you think God can't use you, remember. The next time you feel like God can't use you, just remember that Noah was a drunk, Abraham was too old, Isaac was a daydreamer, Jacob was a liar, Leah was ugly and rude. Joseph was abused, Moses had a stuttering problem, Gideon was afraid, Samson had long hair and was a womanizer, Rahab was a prostitute, Jeremiah and Timothy were too young, David had an affair and was a murderer, Elijah was suicidal, Isaiah preached naked, no, I'm not doing that, Jonah ran from God, Naomi was a widow, Job went bankrupt, John the Baptist ate locusts, Peter denied Christ, disciples fell asleep while praying, Martha worried about everything, Mary Magdalene was what you know about Mary Magdalene, the Samaritan woman was divorced more than once, Zacchaeus was too small, Paul was too religious, Timothy had an ulcer, and Lazarus was dead. God is not finished with you, not yet. Amen. Now then, last week, Peter showed us an amazing song from the greatest showman. I've been waiting a very long time for the right opportunity to show another one from the same film, and as it happens, this week's sermon is exactly the right one. No such thing as a coincidence, is there? So if you're still in any doubt that you're not good enough, this one's for you.